Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Micronutrient for inviting me to come to warm Arizona and to give a presentation uh, on transition car management. The topic of my presentation is a focus on carbohydrate nutrition um, during a, a carbon transition. I like to define uh, what I mean by uh, transition period. Uh, it is made of three weeks uh, before carbon, which is uh, called as close-up period, and three weeks immediately after carbon, uh, which is called a uh, fresh period. Then uh, it is very important uh, time uh, for nutritional management because a uh, fresh cow, we tend to have more problems. Uh, although their intake is not uh, high, um, they, their in, um, nutrient requirement increase drastically and they experience uh, more metabolic disorders and uh, complications. Then um, this is a, uh, the data from one cow uh, in my research farm at the University of Alberta, and um, the change in dry matter intake before and after carbon. Well, this cow uh, increased uh, dry matter intake steadily after carbon, and it reached 23 kilo of dry matter intake uh, within four days after carbon. But not all animals uh, respond uh, you know, this positively. And uh, some cow, um, like uh, 11, 17, well, they, uh, she didn't increase dry matter intake and she suffered uh, from uh, you know, metabolic complications after carbon. So um, how can we help uh, these you know, animals uh, who are at the greater risk of metabolic uh, disorders. Well, um, this presentation, I like to uh, cover these topic, um, optimizing uh, starchy uh, content in close-up diet and um, fresh cow diet and feeding sugars during the carbon transition period and role of forage in fresh cow diet and um, some um, management factor affecting animal response and take home messages. So one thing I like to emphasize throughout my presentation is that, you know, for example, fresh period is not a standalone period, but is a part of transition period. Likewise, close up period is not a standalone period, um, but it's a part of a transition period. So we need to think about the flow of nutrient ma uh, nutritional management when we uh, discuss what's good and what optimum uh, for fresh cow management and close-up cow management. So with that, I like to uh, uh, talk specific thing about uh, optimizing starch content in close-up uh, diets. Well, in this area, um, there are different ideas and recommendations, sometimes conflicting. Uh, to each other. Then I like to uh, give some uh, explanation or physiological mechanism uh, for each idea uh, or recommendation. <clears throat> then, um, well, this slide shows the change in energy requirement uh, from late lactation to early lactation. As you can see here, um, well, after uh, at the dry off, energy requirement of animals decrease drastically uh, because they don't produce milk, then I think a uh, most standard approach to feed uh, this animal is to just meet uh, their energy requirement as indicated by a red color. Okay? So this is a most you know, standard approach and which makes sense, but this is associated with, uh, you know, great risk of rumen acidosis right after carbon because this approach requires sudden change in diet um, from high forage dry cow diet to high grain uh, lactation diet. So um, it increased the risk of rumen acidosis and recent research shows that, well, maybe uh, LPS uh, lipopolysaccharide and toxin can be released uh, from the gut and it causes uh, inflammation, systemic inflammation, then the requirement uh, for energy to deal with inflammation um, well, maybe reduce 
the energy available for milk production, then decrease uh, milk production. So to avoid this kind of complication uh, right after carbon, well, maybe from a pure ruminal perspective, well, extremely speaking, this kind of approach, no change in diet energy content would be maybe good, although it's not realistic um, from a ruminal perspective, because rumen microbe does not like change, sudden change in diet uh, fermentability. But this is, as I said, it's not realistic approach. Um, about 20 years ago, uh, dairy NRC uh, introduced the concept of feeding, uh, you know, um, close-up diet to adapt rumen and rumen microbe to a highly fermentable diet to be fed uh, after carving. So, yeah, this approach was proposed. So, this, um, you know, concept of feeding high starch cross-up diet had a lot of advantages in terms of adapting rumen, uh, microbe, and ruminal epithelial cells uh, to uh, you know, lactation diet, and it helped smooth transition to highly fermentable lactation diets. But more recent research, uh, we found that there are many disadvantages of feeding high starch cross-up diet uh, before carving. Well, it increases uh, fat deposition, and also it causes insulin resistance. <clears throat> then um, this slide uh, shows the relationship between a body condition score and um, mesentery adipose mass. Okay. So um, then um, when researchers fed high energy diet, well, this a uh, solid line uh, shows a relationship between body condition score and visceral fat mass, okay? Then there is one point I like to make uh, from this slide. Well, even uh, with, you know, optimum body condition score at carving, for example, 3.5, there are huge variation in internal fat. Well, some cows have only, you know, five kilo or seven kilo of uh, mesentery fat, but some, you know, have close to 30 kilo of mesentery fat at same body condition score. So um, if we feed a um, lot of energy to dry cow, some cow may get, you know, fat, but some cow may not get fat. But what we see, uh, you know, out from outside, we are evaluating body condition score, which is just a subcutaneous fat, then um, what uh, affect, you know, uh, metabolism uh, of fresh cows, transition cow is more uh, caused by mesentery fat. So, um, so body condition score alone does not uh, tell us exact, uh, you know, the damage that might be caused by feeding excess energy uh, during the dry period. Another uh, research that I like to show uh, is, is done at uh, University of Illinois. Um, the researcher evaluated three different uh, nutritional management protocol. First one is feeding high starch diet uh, throughout the dry period, and the other one is uh, feeding low starch diet, 15% throughout dry period, and um, the other one is the far off period 15% and close-up period 20%. It is more representing more like a close-up, uh, like a steam-up diet. Then this slide, I'm showing that the um, change in um, plasma ketone concentration and x-axis is, uh, you know, days after carbon. So when you feed a high starch diet throughout dry period, it actually increased ketone uh, concentration after carving, and it, um, <clears throat> but uh, when you feed low starch diet throughout the dry period, it helps animal maintain low ketone uh, uh, concentration uh, after carving. Then, well, you may think that you know just feeding a high starch diet for three week period, just close up period, would not uh, cause that kind of, you know, severe problem, but obviously the data shows that uh, ketone concentration 
is higher than cows fed a uh, low starch diet throughout the dry period. So again, while well, animal may not be obese by feeding a high energy diet just for three week period, but obviously uh, metabolism is affected negatively by feeding you know, a high starch, high energy diet uh, during the dry period. So this uh, slide kind of summarizes uh, how you know, prepartum excess energy intake affects uh, you know, metabolism negatively after carbon. Well, it causes a depression in dry matter intake and mobilized body fat. Then uh, you know, it, some of them are deposited in a liver causing fatty liver. Then uh, it decreases hepatic uh, you know, uh, metabolic capacity. Then um, I would say that this is um, also decreased dry matter intake further, and uh, it causes a negative spiral of transition period. Okay. Then um, other thing I like to explain is insulin resistance. Well, insulin resistance, um, well, regardless of you know how fat animals are, um, well, it you know cause uh, excess mobilization of body fat. Okay, <clears throat> then um, I'd like to explain um, briefly uh, what about uh, insulin resistance is. Well, usually insulin, uh, you know, act on adipose tissue and trying to reduce uh, fat mobilization and reduce uh, NIFA. But animal, uh, when they uh, experience insulin resistance, um, adipose tissue uh, do not respond to signal uh, or to, of insulin. Then as a consequence, uh, adipose tissue continue to mobilize a lot of fat. Um, then beyond the you know, capacity for the mammary gland to take up, then um, it is uh, taken up by the liver and it causes um, great oxidative metabolism, which leads to reduction in intake and also uh, it increased fatty liver and ketosis problems. So insulin resistance is another uh, you know, negative consequence caused by feeding excess energy uh, during the dry period. So, <clears throat> so it delays uh, dry matter intake recovery after carbon and uh, it increases metabolic complications. So um, <clears throat> from a a uh, pure uh, metabolic perspective, uh, it is better to feed uh, low energy, controlled energy diet uh, throughout a dry period. Um, but again, well, as I indicated uh, 10 minutes ago, well, animal needs to suffer, uh, you know, right at the cabin if we go with this approach. Okay, then, um, more recently, um, we are talking about what we can do uh, during a fresh period. So if I were a dairy producer, I would probably uh, feed a controlled energy, low energy diet throughout the dry period, but I still see the point of adapting lumen to highly fermentable lactation diet. So I would consider using a fresh period uh, for luminal adaptation. So um, this is just a, a kind of brief overview of our current understanding during the close-up uh, management. Um, but I'd like to uh, show some you know, recent data that was published on Journal of Dairy Science. Well, this is a research report uh, from Finland, uh, Northern Europe. They feed uh, the primary forage source there is grass silage instead of corn silage, then they found some you know, different result. Um, well, dry cow management, um, they, when they uh, feed, okay, well, control energy intake, they use wheat straw, 40%. Then high energy intake, well, it's just uh, ad libitum access of grass silage, a high quality grass silage. Then uh, it um, results over like a 140% of energy requirement. Okay, so 
when they provide additional energy uh, from forage fiber, highly digestible grass silage instead of uh, wheat straw, um, well, greater energy intake did not cause adver adverse effect uh, or you know, uh, no um, you know, insulin resistance and uh, no body fat uh, mobilization after having. Then actually the energy status uh, was better, uh, then milk production was better when they get a greater energy uh, from grass silage you know, before carbon. So this is um, you know, different uh, from what we you know, uh, typically see, found uh, in a diet made of corn silage. Another um, you know, discrepancy uh, recently reported uh, is the you know, grazing system. Well, the recent study published uh, 2015 to 2018, well, in grazing system, controlled energy intake benefit cow with adequate uh, good body condition score, but they reported um, you know, excess energy intake help uh, you know, thinner cows. Okay? Um, so these um, data uh, indicate, um, well, no all animal responded negatively to excess energy intake before calving, and these discrepancy uh, can be attributed uh, to the difference in body condition score at dry off, and maybe a different approach to provide additional energy. Uh, does it, you know, or forage replaced by grain, or that, you know, is wheat straw replaced by high quality forage? I think these, uh, you know, difference in, um, among experiment would may explain um, the different outcome. <clears throat> then other thing I wanna point out is the difference in nutritional management after carving, okay? Um, as I said earlier, um, optimum, you know, close-up management is affected by what kind of management we provide uh, after carving, okay? With that, I'd like to uh, switch gear, and I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, starch, optimizing starch content and uh, starch source uh, during a fresh uh, period. Well, first of all, um, I'd like to show uh, four research data uh, that evaluated starch content of fresh period. Well, just to uh, tell you the conclusion, well, Two of four study reported feeding high starch fresh diet is better uh, for animal. But the other two said um, low starch fresh diet is better uh, for you know, fresh cows. Then I'd like to um, you know, spend some time to talk about what makes the difference in animal response, okay? But first of all, uh, this is a study done at Cornell University and they evaluated a high starch versus low starch diet, 26 and 21 uh, percent. Then um, both dry matter intake hmm, um, and milk yield uh, was greater for cows fed high starch diet, okay? Um, then this is a study done at Michigan State University. Then they also evaluated high starch, low starch, um, then they reported dry matter intake was greater by two kilo for cows fed high starch diet. Then uh, milk fat content was lower, um, but I think this is a good uh, reason um, because, um, well, cows fed high starch diet reduce uh, their body weight loss. Um, so it means that uh, less, uh, you know, fat mobilization and um, less milk fat uh, is produced. Um, but I think it reflects a better energy status of cows fed high starch diet. So these two studies show the positive response uh, to a high starch diet. But this study, um, this is a report from uh, Netherlands. Um, they fed, um, well, they don't have fixed uh, starch content uh, because they change, um, you know, 
concentrate feeding over time. And low starch diet, well, they increase concentrate feeding uh, 0.25 kilo per day. And it, they take uh, 40 days to increase their uh, grain allocation, concentrate allocation to the maximum level of 10 kilo per day. But high starch diet, it's more like a rapid adaptation to uh, you know, high grain diet. Um, they increase concentrate allocation one kilo per day. Then they took only 10 days to get to the maximum level uh, of 10 kilo uh, per day. So um, I cannot give you a specific starch content in this study because it keeps changing. But it's obvious that rapid adaptation uh, you know, rapid increase is associated with greater starch content. But it's interesting. Um, you can see, uh, you know, milk production data uh, there. Um, low starch diet uh, increased milk production by like a four kilo per day, which is interesting. And this is a study uh, that we conducted at University of Alberta. We fed, um, you know, high starch, low starch diet um, then, although we didn't see any difference in dry matter intake, we found similar result, like a four kilo greater milk production response for cows fed low starch diet compared to high starch diet, okay? So two study shows positive response with high starch diet, and the other two study shows positive response, uh, response with low starch diet. Then in this slide, I highlight, uh, you know, starch content uh, that was associated with great animal response uh, with blue font, okay? So as I said, two and two, uh, you know, shows opposite result. Then I'd like to spend some time to think about what caused this difference in animal response. One thing I uh, noticed uh, among these four studies, well, the difference in starch content during a close-up period. So the <clears throat> study that shows more positive response to high starch diet in fresh period, animals were fed high starch diet during a close-up period. And um, then, study that shows a more positive response with low starch diet, uh, the animals were fed low starch diet uh, before, you know, calving. Okay, so I think uh, one of the speculation I had is maybe combination of, you know, high starch fresh diet and uh, low starch, you know, control energy uh, close-up diet may increase uh, risk of SARA right after calving, and probably it reduces intake, energy intake, and milk yield. Or even uh, with similar uh, dry matter intake, maybe systemic inflammation uh, cause more energy wasted for non-productive purpose. I think um, like a recent study, uh, you know, done by Lance Bongard Lab at Iowa State showed that you know, like uh, inflammation or immune system uh, require a lot of energy. Uh, so I think, um, you know, <clears throat> systemic inflammation might be associated with a greater energy requirement, okay? Other thing I noted um, in these four studies, uh, you know, primary starch source, difference in primary starch source in fresh cow diet, okay? Um, the, Two study that showed positive response, positive response to high starch diet, they fed a dry ground corn. But you know the study who shows um, negative response to high starch diet, they, the primary grain, uh, pr primary starch source was barley and wheat. Okay, barley and wheat are way more fermentable than a uh, corn. So I think type of grain we feed after calving may affect, you know, animal response to, uh, you know, fresh cow diet. Then um, related to this, um, I found, um, you know, interesting study reported from Michigan State. Uh, this was published uh, late last year. 
Then they did a uh, you know uh, experiment two by two factorial arrangement of treatment, two level of starch content and uh, two uh, types of starch source, uh, dry ground corn and high moisture corn. Then uh, dry ground corn in vitro seven hour digestibility. A starch digestibility was 44%, but high moisture corn, uh, uh, 62%. So you can see the difference in uh, you know, starch uh, availability uh, between those two grains source. <coughs> then um, this is the result. Well, first of all, um, the black line uh, indicates uh, the animal response uh, of cows fed dry ground corn, and gray line indicate animal response uh, fed a high moisture corn. So um, the p-value uh, was highly significant. Um, hmm. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the cows fed dry ground corn uh, increased dry matter intake compared with uh, cows fed high moisture corn, and the uh, interaction was tendency p equal uh, 0 0.07. So, um, if you compare, um, you know, solid uh, black line with solid uh, gray line, you see the huge difference uh, in dry matter intake. Um, then, dry ground corn, which is less fermentable, help. Cow, fresh cow increase dry matter intake uh, after carving. Then this is a milk production response. Um, dry cows fed dry ground corn increase milk yield uh, right after carving. So it's interesting. Well, more fermentable diet should provide a more energy, but you know, speaking about you know, fresh cows, they responded more positively to diets that contains less uh, slowly fermentable uh, starch source. So, um, so these are the uh, you know, recent study uh, we uh, found uh, in the literature. <clears throat> then um, there are different approach to reduce uh, starch content. Many studies uh, use a high fiber byproduct to reduce starch content of fresh cow diet. But I found two studies uh, you know, use um, sugars to replace a starch in fresh cow diet. Well, this is relatively old, but um, this is a study done uh, at South Dakota State University. And they fed lactose uh, in place of starch uh, during a, a clo um, both close-up period and fresh period throughout carbon transition. Then they found that um, butylate uh, concentration in the rumen increase, which makes sense because sugar uh, ferments more to butylate than propionate. Okay? Then as a consequence, uh, plasma ketone uh, or BHB uh, increase uh, for cows fed lactose. But what I found interesting is that they reported um, less uh, fat uh, you know, deposition uh, in the liver for cows fed lactose. Exact mechanism is not known or not, uh, not discussed in that paper. But I think that um, feeding more lactose, which is feeding, means uh, associated with feeding less starch during a close up period, may uh, cause you know, less. Uh, insulin resistance that may help uh, less uh, fat deposition uh, in the liver. <clears throat> but we don't know. Um, but it's a very interesting finding. Uh, uh, <clears throat> then um, their study, they did not uh, report any difference in uh, milk production. Okay? <clears throat> Another study uh, that I like to show uh, is that. Uh, the study we conducted at University of Alberta uh, 10 years ago. Then in this study, uh, we used uh, sucrose uh, replacing uh, part of uh, dietary starch. Then uh, we noted the greater dry matter intake, um, and also lumen pH was greater for cows fed um, sucrose. OK. 
Okay. Then that was associated with a greater milk fat production, uh, a yeah, tendency for greater milk fat production. So um, you may be wondering why feeding sugar uh, increased lumen pH. Well, sh sugar is more fermentable than starch. So you may think that maybe sh feeding sugar caused more lumen acidosis by you know, rapid fermentation. But <clears throat> replacing starch with sugars um, does not necessarily decrease lumen pH. And actually looking at the literature, uh, several studies reported that feeding sugar in place of starch increased lumen pH. Then one of the speculation is that um, this. Um, well, starch fermentation usually increase propionate production. So it means that one glucose, one hexose, uh, yields two propionic acids, okay? So there are two protons produced from a uh, fermentation of one hexose. But when carbohydrate, like sugar, ferments to butylate, um, <clears throat> one glucose yields uh, one butylic acid, um, then uh, the other two carbon end up as a methane, okay? So this uh, increase uh, more, uh, less uh, proton production, okay? So because, well, I don't think this is everything, but this is one of the reasons or one of speculation um, why, you know, sugar fermentation uh, compared with the starch fermentation um, may not really in, uh, decrease lumen pH, okay? <clears throat> so uh, feeding sugar um, may be a good option uh, for, you know, uh, fresh cow management. And while sugar is a very, uh, you know, digestible, like 100%, almost 100% uh, available, uh, energy is available, but not, does not cause uh, lumen acidosis and often increase milk fat production then we may be able to use a feed stuff high in sugar content in fresh cow management to effectively reduce a starch content without uh, you know, negative uh, consequence. <clears throat> um, so this is a summary uh, for optimizing carbohydrate nutrition during a fresh period. Well, I can say that high starch diet do not necessarily increase milk yield of fresh cows and sugars or highly you know, digestible byproduct feed may be you know, as effective as starch to maintain milk production, okay? But I'd like you to note one thing that, um, <clears throat> so energy status indicated by blood metabolite uh, also well, sometimes uh, shows um, um, some negative effect. Uh, with low starch diet. Well, the, some research shows that feeding low starch diet uh, decrease, uh, well, increase NIFA concentration and decrease glucose concentration and body condition score um, without affecting uh, milk production. So um, we may need to be aware of, you know, these consequences as well. <clears throat> then um, I need to say that research data uh, regarding uh, fresh cow management are not very consistent in the literature, then I think the part of discrepancy or inconsistency may be explained by, you know, different uh, starch source in fresh cow diet, and also, you know, different uh, cross-up uh, management. Um, so low starch cross-up diet may be better uh, to go with low starch fresh diet, and high starch cross-up diet uh, may go better with high starch fresh cow diet. <clears throat> then I think um, the one other point I like to make is that we need to have some kind of you know adaptation period between dry cow and lactation diet. So, well, but I don't think it necessarily ha needs to ha be before coming. And there are some you know uh, 
evidence that feeding advantage of feeding control low energy diet uh, during a dry period, then if we choose to do so, I think we can um, you know, introduce adaptation period uh, after carving during a fresh period. <coughs> okay. Then now I'd like to change the subject. I'd like to talk about role of forage in fresh cow diet. Then first of all, I'd like to uh, show the data uh, from University of Saskatchewan. Um, <clears throat> in this study, uh, well, they use stair uh, and then they limit their uh, intake to 25% of ad libitum intake for five days. This uh, protocol kind of mimicking uh, what we often see uh, with dairy cow uh, during a calving transition. If they experience some you know, metabolic disorders like a um, DA or milk fever, um, they, their intake uh, is reduced uh, for several days. Then we need to think about how we help uh, their recovery in dry matter intake. Then when they fed high forage diet, the intake recover um, you know, within one week, okay? But when they fed low forage diet, uh, you know, after the restriction of dry matter intake, their intake did not recover fully until three weeks, okay? So this data shows that maybe feeding high forage diet uh, can help animal recover dry matter intake more quickly you know, after calving, and especially animal uh, that experience metabolic uh, disorders. Then the other thing I like you, I like to point out is that animal change their you know preference uh, for feed um, when they experience uh, you know acidosis. So this is the Penn State particle separator. Then usually um, the you know longest particle as sorted against uh, by animal, so they you know, tend to leave you know, those long particles behind in the feed bank. But uh, sick cows, there are some research data showing that sick cows or cows experiencing rumen acidosis prefer to consume long particles. Well, in this uh, study from Penn State, um, the researcher uh, prepared two uh, TMR. Uh, similar in nutrient composition, but differ uh, in uh, particle size. So long TMR uh, has, you know, 18% uh, on the top screen. Then short TMR only 5% uh, on the top screen. Then, well, then animal have, you know, free access to both TMR. Then they can choose, uh, you know, whatever TMR they prefer. Um, then. Um, baseline uh, period, animal prefer to eat a TMR with short particle, which makes sense. But they in induce lumen acidosis, um, then they uh, experimentally, then they found that their you know, feed preference change. So more animal uh, prefer uh, long TMR, and this uh, continue uh, you know, after one day after the acidosis challenge. Then uh, two day after ac acidosis challenge, their feed preference uh, you know, changed back to the uh, baseline level. So this data shows that um, you know, animal experiencing lumen acidosis may prefer long particle, although healthy cows tend to sort against those long particles. Well, another study, well, uh, prove the same concept, okay? In this study, uh, animals have access to both alfalfa hay and alfalfa pellet. So both have same NDF, same you know, CP, so uh, similar in nutrient composition. Difference is physical form, okay? So blue color indicates healthy cows. Alfalfa hay, alfalfa pellet or similar, okay? But red color indicates uh, feed preference of acidosis cows, they prefer alfalfa hay over alfalfa pellet, okay? So I think um, this kind of, you know, change in feed preference, uh, you know, occurs uh, in animal, okay? Then I think um, 
we ex tend to experience something similar in human. For example, well, yeah, just for myself, I well, tend to enjoy um, like a glass of wine every night. But when I get sick, when I get flu, I didn't feel drinking wine anymore. Then I look for just simply water, warm water and milk instead of wine or beer. So I think, um, you know, it's very common, it's not surprising for animals to change their feed preference when they get sick or when they experience lumen acidosis. So I think some dairy, um, you know, feed uh, top dress long hay in addition to TMR for fresh cows. Okay, I'm not trying to mean, you know, we, you know, it, I'm, I'm not, I don't mean to encourage animal to, you know, feed sorting by feeding long hay, because if animal don't eat long hay, that's fine. They consume TMR that is optimally formulated to optimize uh, their milk production, but only sick cows seek for long hay. Then they can adjust uh, their needs. Uh, by uh, feeding uh, hay in addition to, you know, TMR. So this study, uh, sh this study shows the importance of uh, physically effective forage fiber uh, for uh, in fresh cow diet. But I like you to note one thing: although physically effective fiber is important, I would not recommend feeding straw to fresh cows. It needs, the forage needs to be you know, highly palatable and digestible one to maximize milk production. Well, in this study, the researcher uh, fed wheat straw, uh, just 4%, but they experienced great reduction in milk production, and also they experienced um, you know, subclinical ketosis problem, okay? So um, forage quality is important, uh, even though animal needs physically effective fiber. <clears throat> so just summarizing, uh, you know, forage fiber, uh, you know, for fresh cows, um, feeding sufficient forage fiber is uh, very important. And especially, uh, you know, when dry matter intake is reduced drastically, then acidosis cow change their feed preference and feeding long hay uh, would be nice in addition to TMR, uh, but um, it should be a uh, digestible forage, uh, not wheat straw. <clears throat> okay, um, at the end, I'd like to uh, just uh, comment uh, on other factors, non-dietary management factors affecting um, you know, milk production. Well, even if we use a high quality forage and optimally formulated uh, diet, we cannot really maximize milk production uh, because animal performance is also affected by uh, feed management and bank management. Then this is a survey uh, done uh, in Spain about 10 years ago. Um, they did survey uh, 47 herds uh, fed a common TMR. Then although they fed a similar TMR, their milk production uh, vary from 21 to 34 kilo, okay? Then, um, then they, researcher ask uh, many different questions, uh, trying to identify factors associated with difference in milk production among the herds fed a common TMR. One of the uh, question that shows significant uh, difference is that do they keep fresh cows separately uh, from the rest of lactating cows? Then the farmer who said yes to this question, um, average milk production was significantly greater than uh, farms said um, you know, no to this question. Okay, then the other thing, uh, other interesting finding is um, do you provide enough feed to ensure some feed refusal next day? So it, it means that you know, feed is available 24 hours a day. Well, when they say yes to that question, uh, milk production was greater. Then push feed to ensure the feed is within the reach of cows. When they said yes to this question, um, milk production was uh, you know, almost four kilo greater uh, per day. So these, you know, um, 
data indicate the importance of effort maximizing dry matter intake on farm, okay? Um, so in addition to diet formulation, in addition to use of uh, high quality feed stuff, nutritional management is an important key uh, for maximizing fresh cow management. Well, these two pictures uh, I, I, I took um, at the you know, two different dairy farms I visited recently. Well, obviously you see that a huge difference in bank management, okay? But it's interesting that both dairymen said uh, same thing. Well, look at my feed bank. My cow eat very well. Well, empty feed bank, well, interpretation of dairy farmer is that, oh, cow eat everything, though they eat well. But on the right-hand side, well, they, yeah, the f dairy producer trying to mean, mean that he needs to feed this much to satisfy the appetite of uh, the high-producing cows. So it's obvious that what, you know, which management, uh, you know, make great effort uh, to maximize dry matter intake, and I found that it's interesting. So, um, so this is a summary. I think the point I want to make from uh, this slide is that we need uh, on-farm effort to maximize dry matter intake is uh, essential uh, for successful transition uh, management, okay? Okay, um, at the end, before I conclude my presentation, I'd like to make one point. Uh, how we monitor the success or failure of transition cow management. The point I want to make is that it's not milk production that tells failure or success. This is a study done at Wisconsin. Then they measure a body condition score change during a three-week period after calving, maybe four-week period after calving, okay? So the animal who lost body condition score and actually who gained body condition score during a fresh period, milk yield did not differ but their conception rate at first AI was uh, different. Um, farm B, um, again, well, milk yield was uh, similar. Well, regardless of change in body condition score, but conception rate at first AI was different. So the, my point is that maybe the change in body condition score during a fresh period is a good indicator uh, telling us failure or success of transition cow management, and it is more informative than um, just looking at, you know, milk yield. So uh, take home message, if I were a dairy producer, I would pr probably prepare different TMR for fresh cows, then, um, then it justify us using, you know, more expensive feed stuff or more expensive feed additive because animal would, you know, cost, uh, <clears throat> return on the cost would be greater for those selected animals. Then maybe I would choose one group dry cow management and feed a uh, control low energy diet before calving, but I would probably prepare different TMR, low starch uh, diet for fresh cows. But some dairy producer would prefer to feed one TMR for the whole lactating cows. Then this, in this situation, we need to consider uh, some, you know, type of uh, adaptation. Uh, maybe, well, although some metabolic uh, complications are expected, we may need to consider having some close-up period to adapt rumen and uh, rumen micro. Or we consider, we may need to consider feeding long hay with TMR for fresh cows uh, so that we can uh, address the specific need of fresh cows. Okay. Um, with that, um, I'd like to thank my, uh, you know, research sponsor, Alberta Milk, uh, and I'd like to take any question. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Oba. <clears throat> we do have several questions here. We're bumping up against the break here, but maybe touch on two or three of these here. Um, the first one is how uh, does the rumen microbial uh, communities change during the transition period is the first part. 
Second part, do you see any significant changes based on low or high starch diets? Okay, well, one of the change um, we see uh, during a you know, transition period in microbial profile is we have you know, reduction in uh, you know, lactate utilizer, such as Megasphera LCD9. Then uh, if uh, they disappear from the lumen or decrease substantially during a close-up period, um, you know, then we switch diet to highly fermentable diet, then um, we don't have microbe to metabolize lactate uh, to blood or fatty acid. Then, um, you know, lactate tend to accumulate in the lumen. Um, then I think, um, you know, by, you know, having good adaptation, we can maintain some population of uh, lactate utilizer so that we can, uh, you know, microbe can deal with, you know, some change uh, in diet fermentability. But we need to maintain, you know, good uh, lactate utilizers throughout the dry period. All right, thank you. Um, one more here. Is there an opportunity to fi fine-tune diets even further in the pre- and postpartum diets based on source of starch, be it ruminal, ruminally or post-ruminally, in regards to digestibility? Um, yes, I think so. Uh, then, as I presented, you uh, indicate in my presentation, like a dry ground corn, less fermentable or slowly fermentable grain uh, would be a good starch source for fresh cows. But we don't have much data uh, to, you know, say beyond that. I think uh, this is the area that we need more research. But I think um, there is a lot of opportunity to fine tune um, by looking at starch source in addition to, you know, how much starch we feed in a diet. All right, thank you. Let's thank our speaker again.